It's a grudge that's not going away. Labor say uh, we just want to drive uh, Alinta out of South Australia, we want to drive that cheap, reliable baseload power out of South Australia. Since the coal-fired power station's closure last May, more than 40% of the state's energy comes from intermittent renewables. Now the Liberals want to abolish South Australia's renewable energy target, 50% by 2025, which it says is driving up electricity prices and unreliability. We're sending a strong message to the market. We want to look at any options, uh, any options whatsoever to return more baseload competition back to our market in South Australia. The Energy Minister warns Mr Marshall's policy will be disastrous to a region trying to build an economy from a solar thermal power plant. Well, he's just put a stake through the heart of solar thermal. But the Shadow Energy Minister, also the local MP for Port Augusta, says his party is still open to renewable energy with the capability for storage. So that the power can be generated when it's windy or sunny, but it can be dispatched as needed. We support that. That's what solar thermal in Port Augusta offers, and so we support that as well. Mr Van Holst Pelican referred to a letter he sent Mr Kutsantonis just last week urging his government to award its energy tender to a solar thermal project. Meanwhile, local campaign group Repower Port Augusta is ramping up its fight to bring solar reserves proposed 100 megawatt solar thermal power plant here. The current SA government has got the power to take the first big step in that direction by selecting concentrating solar thermal storage from its current energy tender. The winner of the tender is expected to be announced mid-year. Lauren Rose, Southern Cross News. Waking up to the smell of smoke, it's every parent's worst nightmare. At 7.30 this morning, Joshua Tomlin and his partner Cassandra woke to their house burning around them. Thankfully, they were able to get their three children to safety. Joshua woke up and he could smell smoke and immediately grabbed the kids and just ran out of the house. Uh, the baby room was engulfed with, with flames at that stage and uh, he'd done the best thing possible, just got out of the house straight away. Neighbours rushed out to help. I just asked them if you got all the family out and everything like that and they said yes, John, we got them all out. So everything was all right. Including one who's an MFS volunteer. Woke up with Zach's, my boyfriend's pager going up and he said get out because it's just next door. So ran out the front and woke up my family. It took crews about an hour to extinguish the blaze. Fire Corps investigators from Adelaide are examining the scene. They say the fire is not suspicious and could have started in the roof. We'll be heading up there just to see if we can determine the, the point of origin. Although the main fire seemed to be in this front bedroom here, that looks like it was a secondary drop down afterwards. The damage bill is expected to come in at around $300,000. Lauren Rose, Southern Cross News. Gordon Marshall, the man who threatened to blow himself up outside of court earlier this year, today appeared inside court facing another nine years in prison for his actions. The 48-year-old sparked a manhunt in July when he failed to return to a northern suburb's pre-release centre after being let out for the day to work. Marshall has a long criminal history. He was just 17 years old when he shot dead a police officer in 1985. After completing his term for murder, he committed a string of other offences that saw him repeatedly in and out of prison. Today, the court heard Marshall had three beers while he was out of the pre-release centre and panicked when he realised he'd be breath-tested on his return. The next day, he made a bomb threat outside the city's main courthouse, demanding to speak to a judge or a lawyer in an attempt to surrender. During sentencing today, the court heard while Marshall had no explosives on him, the sheriff's officer he approached was scared for her life. I felt very unsafe and terrified of what might have happened. I hope I never have to go through that feeling of terror again. I'm trying to move on. This isn't Marshall's first escape. He fled from the Youth Training Centre in 1986 and then again from the Cadell Training Centre in 1995. Judge Tracy gave Marshall a discounted sentence for pleading guilty, 14 months behind bars. He'll be eligible for parole in nine months. Lauren Rose, 10 Eyewitness News.